Hello boys and girls, my name is Danny Mac and I just wanted to update you on the action constraint script that I was working on a couple of weeks ago. In case you missed it, I was trying to come up with a script that behaves somewhat like set driven key in Maya. The simplest and practical way I can explain its usage is that it's like shape keys but using bones. So you can create a facial expression using bones, then turn it into a slider. The script also allows you to create an inverted action and attach it to the same slider so that it controls both actions. Now, the way it works right now is that it creates a bunch of action constraints which are driven by a bunch of bones that get hidden in the 3D viewport. What I tried to do since the last video was come up with a solution that avoids adding these constraints and hidden bones just to make things a bit cleaner. Now, unfortunately, I became a bit stuck, so I decided to work on something else for a while and then come back to it. But then I started working on something else and then something else, and then I kind of forgot about it. Then I got a couple of comments asking where it was, so I thought, why don't I just give you the version that I was working on before, and you can let me know if you have any trouble with it. It isn't quite as finished as I intended to get it, but there's little use it collecting dust on my hard drive. But before you download it, there's a couple of things you should be aware of. The first thing I'll say is that don't use it on a model that you've already animated. The script expects the pauses to be developed in the rigging stage and will remove any animation you might have on the bones. Another thing to note is that the script will only apply the action constraints to the bones you have selected. So make sure you select all the bones that contribute to the pause before you hit the button. Originally, I had it so that it affected any bone that was moved from the default position, which worked well on my own rigs, but after testing it on some complex rigs, it tended to send them a bit crazy. I think one contributing factor to this is that at the moment, the script will change a property even if it's locked, so that's something to bear in mind too. Though I can't imagine this would be difficult to fix if necessary. Finally, a word about the inverted action. Checking this box will only work if you already have an action with the same name existing in the actions panel. However, I haven't yet put anything in place if you try to add an inverted action twice. Now, there's no reason you'd want to do this anyway, but it will just add an action constraint that doesn't do anything. And I think that's all the info you need for now. Just bear in mind, don't use this on important work or anything just test it out on practice models or something like that because i will not be held responsible for any computers blowing up or any of that i'll drop a link in the description to the script on my gumroad page and don't be shy to have a shop around while you're there if you want it has uh, been quite a slow month <laughs> uh hope it's useful anyway and i'll catch you in the next video peace